हेलो फ्रेंड्स फ्रेंड्स इन दिस लेक्चर विल बी अगेन मूविंग टू पार्टनरशिप राइट आफ्टर द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट नाउ अगेन वी आर मूविंग टू पार्टनरशिप एंड विल स्टार्ट विद डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म राइट This is the last chapter in partnership. We have done goodwill, change in profit sharing ratio, basics, admission, retirement, death. So, this is now the last chapter. This is dissolution of partnership firm. Clear? This is an easy chapter. Nothing to worry. Right? All the chapters are easy if you know the concept. So, I am focusing more on the concept clarity. right now dissolution of partnership the first thing is what is dissolution what do you mean by dissolution if i say in very simple terms it means that i am closing down closing down my partnership business right clear dissolution of partnership fee, partnership firm means that we are closing down the partnership business we are ending the partnership business clear clear friends in a very simple term i will say dissolution of partnership firm means closing down the partnership business now there can be many reasons for this it can be the mutual agreement between the partners partners mutually agree that the business is no more profitable let's close it down let's end our partnership right or they have some conflicts among them so they mutually decide that let's end this partnership and dissolve the partnership firm clear or it can be compulsory dissolution by law compulsory dissolution right by law how can this pen, uh, this can be the compulsory dissolution by law if the law finds out that you are involved in some unlawful activity illegal activity then the law can tell you to close down your partnership business in that case also we say it is the dissolution of the partnership firm clear then it can be death of a partner how if you are two partners in a partnership firm one of the partner dies so will it be a partnership it will no more be a partnership firm there were only two partners one partner died and you know what is the basic of the very basic meaning of partnership two or more persons it involves two or more persons so where there are only two persons in a partnership and one of them dies then what is the meaning of partnership right so it is it means the dissolution of partnership firm so likewise there can be many reasons in which there can be dissolution of the partnership firm that means we are closing down our partnership business this is the very in a very layman language i have told you what is dissolution of partnership firm closing down the partnership business clear now how to do the accounting treatment in case of dissolution this is what we have to study right what will be accounting treatment for dissolution right this is 
different from what we have done in the previous chapters if you remember the last three chapters change in profit sharing ratio admission and retirement the topics we have done in those three chapters were quite similar to each other isn't it the topics for the three chapters were quite similar to each other but this dissolution is something different clear now to understand this to have a crux knowledge of what we are going to do in dissolution of firm listen to a story very very carefully okay i'll tell you i will explain this to you through a story right through a real life situation some of you might have faced that situation right now what is the story you stay in a rented accommodation you stay in a rented accommodation right clear now from this rented accommodation you are shifting to your own home right you have bought your own home so you no need to stay in a rented accommodation this is a fully furnished home what do you mean by this the fully furnished home means you have everything in your new home you have bed you have refrigerators you have tv you have microwaves everything you have you have a mirrors everything this is a fully furnished home that you have bought right currently you are staying in a rented accommodation now you have to shift from a rented accommodation to your own home this own home is fully furnished that is in that home you already have everything from bed refrigerator microwaves almiras everything you have now the first thing that will come to your mind is in this rented accommodation also we have various assets what are the assets we have bed we have tv we have refrigerators isn't it you have all these things in your rented accommodation also right but in your own home you already have these facilities so you why you will carry these assets with you with you to your own home when you already have these in your new home isn't it a logic you already have beds in your new home why will you carry the old beds to your new home you already have isn't it your new home is fully furnished then why will you carry the old beds tv refrigerators of a rented accommodation you won't carry the old beds old tv old refrigerators that were there in your rented accommodation because your new accommodation your new home is fully furnished so what will you do with these assets the next question is what will you do with these assets obviously the first thing that will come to your mind is you will sell these assets isn't it you will sell these assets and you will realize money by selling assets clear friends so whatever the assets you have in your rented accommodation you will not take it to your new home because your new home is already fully furnished with these facilities so what will you do with these old assets you will obviously sell these assets the first thing that will come into your mind is we have invested on these assets now we can't let them go in free we will sell out the beds tv refrigerators we will sell out in the market clear and from that sale we will realize some money clear 
clear friends this much is clear now if you are living in a rented accommodation right you are leaving the rented accommodation now you are leaving the when you are leaving the rented accommodation you have to clear out the bills also you have to clear your pending bills also related to your rented accommodation like rent right second payment to your maid who was working at your rented accommodation then payment to milkman right then payment for newspaper now when you are shifting from the rented accommodation to your own home you have to clear the pending bills first of all what you will do is you will sell your assets right then whatever money you have realized from selling the assets you will obviously use that money in clearing these pending bills you will use this money in clearing your pending bills like you will pay the rent you will pay to your maid you will pay to the milkman you will have to make payment for the newspaper and there can be n number of payments and in the process you have to decide whom to make the payment first like you decide first you will make the rent payment second you will make payment to maid then you will make payment to the milkman then whatever is you will make to the newspaper then whatever is left you will keep it with yourself clear friends now again i am repeating you are staying at a rented accommodation now you are shifting to your own house that is fully furnished with all the facilities all the assets so what you will do with the old assets you will sell out those old assets and realize some money clear now from that realized money you have to clear the bills of the rented accommodation like the rent of the accommodation payment to maid payment to milkman payment for newspapers you have to make n number of payments you will decide whom you will pay first then second then third then fourth clear you will use this realized money in clearing the pending bills like rent payment to maid payment to milkman and newspaper right this story is clear to you now moving back to dissolution if we talk of dissolution what we are doing in dissolution is we are closing our business in the process of closing business you will be having the assets in the balance sheet and you will be having the liabilities capital in the balance sheet isn't it on the date when you decide to dissolve the partnership firm on the date when you decide to move from the rented accommodation to the new house you must be having the assets and the liabilities appearing in the balance sheet right dissolution of partnership means you are moving from a rented accommodation to your own home clear friends so on the date of dissolution on the date you decide to move out of the rented accommodation to your own house you must be having your own assets isn't it and you must be having some liabilities appearing in the balance sheet you must be having assets and liabilities assets and liabilities appearing in the balance sheet so when you are closing down the business when you are shifting from a rented accommodation 
to your own house what you will do is you will sell all assets right and pay all liabilities clear friends so dissolution says that on closing our dis uh, partnership business we will sell all our assets that are appearing in the balance sheet and we will have to pay all the liabilities right like while moving from a rented accommodation to your own home you have to sell all the assets and use that realized money in clearing the pending bills isn't it so similarly in case of dissolution you will sell all the assets and pay all the liabilities clear i hope this much is clear to you now friends in case of dissolution we have one section 48 we have section 48 settlement of accounts right this section is of indian partnership act indian partnership act 1932 now what this section 38 says this so, sorry 48 this section 48 relates to the payments to be made right the order of payments to be made from the realized money of assets it says you have sold the assets you have realized the money that realized money you have to use in a particular order to clear your liabilities clear the section 48 says one is application of assets application of asset means you have sold assets and you have realized money right so how to use this money how to use this money in paying liabilities right this basically relates to order of payment this is given in this section 48 application of assets that we have sold the assets we have realized the money then how to use that realized money in the payment of liabilities we have to decide the order of payment that is like here i told you that we decide that the first we will pay rent then we will pay to the maid then to milkman this is how this is what we are going to decide here that whatever money we have realized from the assets to whom that money will be paid first second third fourth like that clear so this section says that whatever you have realized first pay to outsiders that is our creditors section 48 says whatever money you have realized from the assets your first responsibility is pay to the outside people from whom you have taken the money or for whom you have to make the payment outside liabilities are to be settled at priority right so we have to pay outside people first then after paying outside we have to look at the inside people who are the inside people partners right among the partners he says at second you have to pay partners loan if any partner has given loan to the partnership firm 
Then section 48 says that after paying to the outsiders, you have to pay that partner's loan first. Clear? Whatever money you have realized from the assets, you have to first pay to the outsiders. Then you have to pay to the partner's loan. Right? Then at third, you have to pay partner's capital. Clear? First, you have to pay to the outsiders. After paying to the outsiders, you have to come back to the insiders. Who are the insiders? Partners. Out of the partners, they say first pay the partner's loan. Right? Then pay the partner's capital. Clear friends? First pay partner's loan and then pay partner's capitals. Then after that, they say if anything is left, residue if anything is left from this amount will be shared will be shared by all partners in their profit sharing ratio clear so similar to the concept here I told you that whatever money you have realized from the sale of assets you have to decide that you have to pay rent first then you have to make payment to the maid then you have to make payment to the milkman then you have to make payment for newspaper then whatever is left you will keep it in your pocket. Similarly in this case section 48 says that after selling out the assets whatever money you realize whatever money you get on the sale of assets first of all out of that money you will pay to the outsiders first of all you will pay the outsiders liabilities then secondly you will pay the partners loan then third you will pay the partners capital then if there if there is anything left after that that will be shared by the partners in their profit sharing ratio is that much clear friends one more thing section 48 says related to treatment of losses if you have any losses appearing in your books on the date of dissolution that losses might be pertaining to the previous years if you have any losses that are appearing in the books on the date of dissolution how to write off those losses right section 48 gives how to how to pay off these losses right he says first out of profits if you have any profits first write off the losses out of the profits right then if the profits are not sufficient to write off the losses then use partners capitals right the first is try to meet the losses out of the profits if the profits are not sufficient then you can use the partners capital accounts capitals you can use even after that if the losses are not sufficient amount is not sufficient to cover the losses then partners individually will contribute clear personally right what he says is you have the losses appearing in the books that might be pertaining to the previous years now you have to cover up those losses clear so those losses can be covered first out of the profits if you have right even if you have profits 
till the date of dissolution those profit amounts will be used to write off the losses then if the amount is not written off then you will use the partners capitals even then if you have some amount of losses left that will be paid by the partners in their individual capacities right that will be paid personally by the partners clear friends so this is about section 48 which deals with settlement of accounts i hope with the story you have understood the concept what we are going to do in dissolution of firm we are going to sale of the assets we are going to pay off the liabilities the order in which the liabilities have to be paid is given by section 48 settlement of accounts it says pay to the outsiders first then pay to the partners loan then pay the partners capitals then if anything is left with the partners they will distribute among themselves in their profit sharing ratio right personally then the treatment of losses if you have any losses appearing in the books then how to write off those losses firstly out of profits then out of the partners capitals even then if you have some losses those losses will be met by the partners in the individual capacities those will be met by the partners personally in their profit sharing ratio right so this contribution will be in profit sharing ratio of partners that is if one partner is getting more share in the profits that partner will contribute more in writing of losses and the partner which is getting less he will contribute accordingly clear friends i hope this much is clear to you this was the very basic of dissolution you know this was very important for you to understand this basic of dissolution that how we are going to apply the assets how we are going to treat the losses you must understand this thing right now let's see a small practical problems on this these are very small practical problems on section 48 they say the firm of x y and z was dissolved on 31st of march 2016 Y demands that his loan of twenty five thousand should be paid before the payment of capitals of the partners, but X and Z demand that capital should be paid before the payment of Y's loan. Who is correct? Can you tell me who is correct? I have given you this order of payment: pay to the outsiders, pay to the partners' loan, then pay the capitals. In this case, who is right? Y is saying, pay me. my loan of 25000 first but x and z says pay the capitals first looking at this order don't you think y is correct because you have to pay the partners loan first clear so we can say that the demand of y is correct because as per section 48 we have to pay the partners loan before we make payment to partners for their capitals clear friends next all the partners decide to dissolve the firm on 31st of march 2016 why a partner demands that his loan of 80000 should be paid before payment of mrs x loan of 20000 but x another partner demands that mrs x loan should be paid before the payment of y's loan who is correct can you tell me what is the provision of section 48 in this regard he says section 48 says that we have to pay to the outsiders first now tell me mrs x is an outsider or an insider can you identify that why is a partner he is a insider he is demanding that his loan should be paid before the mrs x loan Now can you tell me whether Mrs X is an outsider or insider Mrs X is obviously an outsider the partners are X and Y Mrs X is some third person she is an outsider so as per section 48 the outsiders have to be at the first priority while making the 
payment while setting the liabilities. So the demand of X is correct that misses X loan should be paid before the payment of Y's loan. Clear? These are small problems. These are just to clarify your doubts. Right? So next is A and B are partners in a firm sharing profits in the ratio of 3 is to 2. Clear? Mrs. A has given a loan of rupees 20,000 to the firm. Mrs. A. But the partners are Mr. A and Mr. B. Clear? Mrs. A has given a loan of 20,000 to the firm and the firm has also taken a loan of 10,000 from B. B is partner. Mrs. A is an outsider. The firm was dissolved and its assets were realized for rupees 25,000. State the order of payment of Mrs. A's loan and B's loan with reason if there were no other creditors of the firm. So, Mrs. A is an outsider. We have taken a loan from an outsider. B is an insider because he is a partner. We have taken a loan from the partner also. Now tell me as per section 48 who will be paid first. Whether Mrs. A will be paid first or B will be paid first. See the provision. Pay to the outsiders first then pay to the partner's loan. Who is the outsider? Mrs. A. We will pay 20,000 to Mrs. A. Our assets have realized 25,000. Out of 25,000, we will first make a payment of 20,000 to A. Now, what is the amount left with us? We are left with only 5,000. So, we will pay the B's loan to the extent of 5,000. Because B is an insider, the partner, the partner has given a loan. And as per section 48, first outside liabilities are to be settled. Then partner's loan is to be settled then partner's capital is to be settled. So in this case, Mrs. A is an outsider. We have settled the liability of an outsider first. Then whatever the amount is left, that is 5,000, we have settled the loan of the insider, that is our partner B. Clear friends? I hope this much is clear to you. The basics of dissolution is clear. Right? Remember this story of Moving from a rented accommodation to your own house. Clear? I hope you have understood this basic of dissolution, what we are going to do in dissolution. We are going to sell the assets. We are going to settle the liabilities. We will prepare some accounts in the process that we will do in the next lecture. Right? I tell you one thing that in case of dissolution, we have to basically prepare four accounts. If we talk of dissolution, in dissolution, we have to prepare four accounts. Number one is realization account. As the name suggests, you have sold the assets and you have realized the money that will be taken to realization account right then you have to prepare partners loan account to settle the partners loans then you have to take partners capital accounts and then lastly we will prepare the bank or cash account these are basically the four accounts that we will prepare in case of dissolution of partnership firm rest we will do the journal entries right so I, I really hope that you are clear with the basics of dissolution what we are going to do in the dissolution how we are selling the assets how we are realizing the money and how we are paying off the debts the section 48 is important to understand right so if you have any queries send me an email at ksj teaching at the rate of gmail.com clear friends so in the next lecture we'll start with accounting treatment 
right accounting treatment of dissolution of firm in the next lecture we'll start with accounting treatment clear friends so that's all for this lecture friends thank you so much